Holy cow. How have I never noticed that the label on the shovel is holographic? Just when I was getting ready to peel it off, that thing's staying. That's too pretty to go. It's finally time. Finally time to get the Serenity Garden done. And I mentioned, I said in the last vlog, I'll make sure it's the first thing I do this week. And I'm sticking to that promise. Oh, oh, he's so pretty. All right, and for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, this area here is what I've always kind of called like my Serenity Garden, sort of a meditative area and it needs a complete and total facelift. That never bothered me before, but all of a sudden, I hate it. This location is mostly shade, though it does get a few hours of morning sun and then it's filtered for a little while, but it's fairly dark. Now, just over here, there's a lot of sun. It's starting to kind of fizzle out, but that's why the paniculata hydrangeas do so well there. So I do have to pay attention carefully as I go down the line, make sure things are getting enough sun. That magnolia is not staying here. There's not enough sun over here for it anymore. There was, but it's summer, so the sun's lower and things are just different. I have a wide variety of plants here to work with. Uh, a lot of these are like clearance type plants or plants that were kind of on their last legs. I'm just gonna try and get this together. I will have to cut things back like there's some impatience there. I'll have to do a heavy cutting on to get them to kind of bounce back and get more full. This is mostly going to be foliage. To me that's what's the most tranquil and most relaxing and yeah so that, that's what I'm going for here. And there are a few more plants I still need to bring over here. But my main focus, my first focus is always this big, big, <laughs> this big blue pot here. Uh, in the past, last year really, I had a Japanese maple in here but we had a really bad winter and it did not make it. And I would prefer to put perennials and have them kind of scattered about, but I don't really want to go out and spend money on them. So I want to use things I already have, or like I said, things were in clearance. A lot of tropicals. And at some point I would like to do something up here. I know that that glider looks terrible. It's a sentimental thing. It was my grandmother's. She's dead now. I need to part ways with it. I am aware. That's one of the reasons I got this new swing down here, which is going to be going here. And then the glider can go. So I don't necessarily know if I prefer seeing directly into the neighbor's backyard or we're looking at the dirty glider. Just saying. So I got that magnolia moved and I should mention this entire space probably will not be done in this video, but I'm going to do my best to get the bulk of it done. I just, I know myself well enough to know that I'm going to want to add and detract and I have a fountain that I want to put over here that I got on clearance, but the power, there's issues with that. So it's that working on getting the electrical fixed out here. And so there will be other details, finer details worked out later. But for now, going to get the bulk of the planting done. I have everything set up on drip irrigation. So I did go through and make sure everything was together and not falling apart and that I have enough hoses and lines to run to everything. Right, so first off, in the big pot, I'm going to put this philodendron Bynifa tichetetebita, the split leaf shalom tree philodendron. Never been able to say this guy's name right, but the philodendron. Going in this big pot, I'm not potting it up in there because I have to move all of these during the winter time. I'm in 6B. They can't stay outside, so I don't want to move that big pot in and out of the house every single year. And it risks breaking it because, you know, stuff happens. And then what am I going to put in front of there? Like I said, the sun kind of moves this way, so anything that's flowering, this is probably where it needs to go between here and there. So I'm thinking these double impatience. They're, uh, <laughs> they're not exactly specimens, but I'll cut them back, get them nice and bushy, and they'll look better in a few weeks. Maybe for some color, I might go ahead and drop a croton in here, right there in the front. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, it looks good. With that croton in there, let's get something going over the front. Creeping Jenny. All right, Jenny got a little bit torn up trying to get her out of her nursery pot. That's okay. Creeping Jennies are so tough. I'm not worried about that. I really like the color of this green against the blue of these pots. It stands out really nice. Creeping Jenny grows very tight down structures, so it just, it looks nice when it gets going. Like, there's some over here that you can kind of see behind the weeds. Now I'm going to fill that in, backfill around everything, and move on to the next one. Oh, and if you were wondering, because I'm sure you saw these and you were like, man, I have to have some of these guys, are the, uh, oh, what are they? These are the Double Impatience Acapulco Coral Reef, I believe, from Proven Winners. They are so leggy. Wow, I need to sharpen my pruners. That's pathetic. Okay, I'm going to go sharpen my pruners. Since they are so incredibly leggy, oh, wow, I didn't sharpen these very well. I'm going to go in here and cut these back to about a third, which is pretty heavy and drastic, but really necessary. That's going to encourage them to grow out and get more bushy. And I'm thinking a ginger would do well in this pot here, like this alpena. Remember, I said a lot of these were clearance plants. Not going to be like the nicest specimens here. But uh, yeah, it'll grow. It'll recover. 
I like the variegation in the shade. It helps light things up and draw the eye over. Kind of like with the Croton, even though the Croton needs more sun, and so does this Philodendron, but I think, like I said, I think this is kind of that cutoff point. This is gonna be a little bit more shaded over here. And in here. Okay, so what I end up doing in this one, I forgot I was filming and just kind of went for it. Uh, right here, this is, I believe it's called King Orange Philodendron. I'm not positive, I'm pretty sure that's its name. I have this fun trailer coming over the front. I thought the kind of wild texture of it goes well with the cracks in the pot. I don't remember what it's called though. It was just sold like an assorted terrarium plant. And then back here, this is a Shribalanthes dirianus. That is a Persian shield. These things are going to need time to fill out until they start to like look really nice, but they're, despite there only being a few flowers, this is still gonna be very colorful with the croton the Persian shield, the variegation of the ginger, that nice foliage on the philodendron. I think this is gonna end up looking nice, but it may take a little while. All right, so here's the deal. Sometimes when I'm doing projects and filming them at the same times, my head gets cluttered with what to say versus getting things done. And there's a lot to do over here. I decided, I think what I did last year with this space was a before and after, so I'm gonna do that again. So this is a before, and then in the after, we'll talk about what I did. The after won't be finished. I'm just getting everything planted up, and then the rest of this will actually be like normal vlog stuff of me probably doing more detail work over here. Have some errands after run too. The mosquitoes are terrible. I have to spray over here. I'm getting eaten alive. All right, anyways, before and uh, after, well, what do we think? Okay, and it's actually the next day. I had some other stuff come up, so I had to take care of that, and the sun went away, and it just wasn't great for filming. So for starters, over here on the left, this is the Philodendron Xanadu. I went ahead and repotted this guy, which it really needed to be repotted. So that worked out well. To carry on that motif from the first planter that I did in here, put some more Creeping Jenny in here. These are more like cuttings, but they should take off and do just fine. Have a lovely Boston Fern over here in the front. And in the very front, this is the uh, Cinnamon Dolce Gumdrop Hookera from Proven Winners. That one is a perennial, and I think it looks pretty nice there. I like the contrast that it adds. More Crotons, a Kale Lily. This Kale is pretty much done blooming. But this might be a decent spot for it. I'm keeping an eye on it. It seems to be doing well, which means that the Croton's probably going to be moved, and as well as the Philodendron, because these don't like sun. And if this is doing well, there's not enough sun right here. As I mentioned, I'm going to have to kind of rearrange and play around with things. And then back here, we have Rhythmic Dancer Blue. No, no, the Let's Dance Rhythmic Blue Hydrangea. So blue and pretty, right? I think the flowers kind of fade and in and out a little bit and my water is very alkaline and so is my soil so I think these will blue up over time but I'm not positive. Regardless I still think they're pretty. Even the more undeveloped flowers in the front I mean it's just such nice color. I love that. And this is where we left off. I went ahead and threw in a, another one of these. Not another one. I haven't planted one of these over here. Persian Shield. That's in there. Eventually this ginger should kind of come up and out and fan out from the back which will look nice. Again, I don't know what this lovely little trailer here is in the front, but it seems to be responding well to being repotted. I have a Strozia Nicolai. This is the White Bird of Paradise. I repotted this in a video a few weeks ago. This is a good spot for it because it's going to get regular irrigation from my drip emitters, and it's getting morning sun and not too much of it. I think that it's going to do well here as far as recovering and taking on its new pot. And right behind there is the Ming Aurelia Bonsai, is what I was calling it. Uh, for now, I had to mount this drip emitter up here. I need to find a new place for that. I just kind of want to get some stuff back there on the wall to kind of help mask the backdrop. I don't really think it's doing the trick, though, especially not on camera. Tucked another Boston fern here in the front, and then over here. Oh, no, first, I stuck a Justicia carnea here in the front of this planter that I did at the beginning. I wanted something with a little bit more color. This will, They put out kind of like a neat honeycomb-looking flower. That's me really pretty, and there is one of those in this planter over here too that doesn't want to focus. Right there. So here we go. This is a New Guinean patient. Unfortunately, I don't have its tag, so I don't know the variety name, but I like it down there. Along with this Neogorilla, is that how you pronounce it? I cannot remember. But um, a nice bromeliad adds a nice lushness and exotic appeal. And then the uh, pothos. And I also went ahead and got my lanterns hung up nice and high. I didn't think ahead though. I need to change their battery pack out. So, whoops, but I can actually, I can reach this. 
and pull it down. So even though it is up high, I can just barely reach it. And I got the glider moved. There it all is. Everything needs to fill in. Now, the main reason I've mentioned that I'm pretty sure there's enough sun over here for a lot of these plants is because I had solar fairy lights tucked away in here before, and they were getting a good enough charge to go for uh, several hours, so it gets a good amount of morning sun, with the exception of this little, like, from here and over, where the hydrangea and these guys are, so I may need to move some things around there, but otherwise... Everything should work out fairly well here. This drip line that's running through here, that is a drip line that I had lost. I knew where it ended or where part of it was over here, but I needed to find it. So I have that left out and exposed so I can remember to mark it and label it, and then I'll tuck it back behind there. And I need to go through and add drippers like more individually instead of having just the big sprayer up there in that Aurelia pot. Yeah, not gonna lie. I kind of like it here. Is this making anybody dizzy? Okay, I'll stop swinging. Yeah. I don't mind the view, that's for sure, especially over here. It's wild, it's crazy. This may not seem serene to a lot of people, but to me, what is serene and what is relaxing is feeling like I'm surrounded by lush plants and just kind of like immersed in nature. Whereas for others, that may be totally off track with what they consider to be serene or relaxing. Maybe you like something very formal where everything has a perfect spot and a perfect shape and it's perfectly spaced. I see that everywhere in everyone's front yard. I want something different. This is perfect for me. Now, like I said, I have a fountain that will be going over here once I get the power fixed. I'm hopeful that at nighttime this will be really pretty with the fairy lights. Hopefully they'll be visible through the canopy up there. Hose looks good there too, doesn't it? I really need to get a hose reel. I mean, I have a hose reel, but not one for this hose. This hose is really thick. I can't find one that fits on there. But yeah, okay, there it is. It's just the start. It's just kind of the bones of things. Things have growing to do. A lot of what's in here were clearance plants and things that maybe need a little bit of TLC. And this is a good spot for a lot of those. So in time, this is just gonna keep getting better. Ugh, God, these hydrangeas are so pretty. There's a view from across the, oh, you can't see that at all. You can kind of see it. It's grainy. That's not really much better. Maybe it is. Maybe I'll be able to see it better when I'm editing. I don't know. I like it a lot. So happy to have that done. Oh, that's really pretty too. There's certain things I'm holding off from showing because the garden tour is coming up here in a few days, really, I think, from this vlog. But I mean, you guys see everything every week, so it's... I have so many mosquito bites from working down there. Also, sorry if my energy seems a little bit low and I'm talking a little bit quiet. All of my wisdom teeth decided to shoot out from my gums the other day, so my mouth is kind of tender. That's all that is. I feel fine otherwise. There's nothing a little ibuprofen won't fix, but... It's, uh, it makes it hard to talk for a long time. You know what I mean? I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're looking sexy. That is a sexy flower. I love this hibiscus so much. Okay, and the next thing on the agenda. It's time to repot this adenidia. Yeah, it's got to get repotted. Time's up. I cannot stand this mess over here and the way things look. It's got to get repotted. This is a 25-gallon pot, so I need to go with probably a 30-inch nursery pot for it, and it needs to be cheap. And that's going to be really... Oh, that's not a smart place for you to be. That's going to be kind of difficult to pull off because big pots are expensive and heavy, so it has to be plastic because this needs to be movable. These My palms got to get moved around a lot because, you know, they can't grow out here in the wintertime, so... That's something I have to keep in mind. And also, I know it doesn't really look like it, but I need potting soil. I only have two bags left. There's this miracle Grow, and then this Fafford, the professional mix from Sun Grow. Those are compost down there, the bottom two bags. So I'm going to need a lot more potting soil to get that done. And not only am I going to be repotting this guy, but I'm going to use this pot to repot one of my Robolinis. Just go ahead on down here, and I can show you what I'm talking about. Doing this fun sway angle for the people who complain about my camera not being steady enough. How you like me now? Just kidding. So, this Robolini here is in a 15 gallon nursery pot and it is so overdue to be repotted. So that's gonna get moved up into the 25 gallon pot that that Edenidia is in. So, am I making any, I should just like do this. So essentially what I need to do here is just go find a nice big pot to put that Adenidia palm in. I can swap that 25 gallon pot out that the Adenidia is in the nursery pot with the 15 gallon pot the Robolini is in. So by getting the one new pot, I'll actually be able to repot two different things. Just makes sense. Go ahead, head to the nursery, see if they have anything that'll work for a reasonable price comparable to a pot I found on Amazon that was 127. 
which is a lot of money, but it's not terrible for a pot that size. I would prefer to get something wholesale, but normally when you order pottery wholesale, you have to order a lot, like a ton. I only need the one pot. And this is normally where I'd cut into a little bit of a driving time lapse, but they're really, like, it's not that pretty out today. Like, it's kind of hazy. The air's a little bit funky. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing that today. Maybe I will. Is this pretty? Is this entertaining? Would it be entertaining if I were to speed it up? I've done this drive with you guys so many times. Ah, what the heck? We'll do a short one. Here we go. Okay, well, the nursery did not have anything that would work. So I'm at my favorite place. Sarcasm. Yeah, this is, this is the last shot. If, if they don't have it, then I'll just have to get it from Amazon. Which case I don't know what we're gonna do for the rest of the vlog. There are plenty of other things to be done. But yeah, I'm gonna run in there, see if they have a pot. I really wanna get another very quickly. So far, no luck, but look at, look at how. <laughs> Digging through the clearance stuff and still not finding anything. What? Why does this look like a butt? Oh, <laughs> that makes more sense. It's not a booty. See that? You see it? I do not approve. Not time yet. Stop it. <laughs> I, can't. I can't. I'm leaving. That's enough. And I'm home. I need to pop this urn up. I had been, I know that dog's in rough shape. He needs to be restuffed. I had been thinking I was going to do this with succulents and put a yucca tree in there, but I just can't find the type of yucca I want for sale anywhere. And I have to make a return to Walmart, and I think Walmart has the Sunfinity Sunflowers, which are just supposed to be like a really vigorous hybrid that keeps on going, that they don't just like set their flowers and stop like other sunflowers do. And I was like, that could be kind of pretty here. Cherry, do a Sunfinity Sunflower. Sunfinity, ha. <laughs> With um, some type of ornamental grass, something spilling over the front, maybe stick a spike plant in there just because those are more winter hardy. As in when I move them around into the garage, they survive the winter much better and everything else in there would be annual so that eventually that spike plant would take over and be nice and big for this pot. I like that idea because the shape of this pot, I can't really stick anything in there that gets massive because I will never get it out because the center is so much smaller than the top. Or really, it's down there at the bottom. It goes big, little, big. So whatever roots down there in the bottom, it, it gets stuck there. Well, they had them a couple days ago. But, uh, <laughs> things just aren't going as planned today, are they? Well, you can't say I didn't try. I mean, just last weekend, Walmart had a whole row full of those Sunfinity sunflowers. Everybody's clearing things out, though. They gotta get ready for the mums. So I guess it's time to end it. But... Just kidding. Nothing here is actually looking all that great, but it was all clearance. It's like, I can make this work. I mean, it was $3, $1, roughly $9 for everything. Like I said, nothing's looking that good, but that's okay. I already had the banana that's the leftover from last year, and I already had these milkweeds ready to plant up. This isn't gonna be like the most logical combination of things. Everything will do well in that spot in the driveway though. The reason I'm putting the banana and the elephant ear in there is because everything else that's going in this is all annual where I live, particularly this cordellini, cordeline, cordellini, whatever, how do you wanna say it? My point is that I can just pull this around into the garage during the winter time and cut the top off that banana, it will go dormant. Same thing with this black coral elephant ear. They're hardy zone 7B and up, I'm 6B. So those two will still overwinter. And I wanna have something in there that next year when I slide it back out, it'll just take off again on its own. So it's gonna be kind of a funky combination this year, but I mean, whatever, these plants all look like garbage anyways. Is that what I should call this, a garbage planter? I kinda like that. Wow, there's a lot more here than it's going to fit in there. Now, we'll make it fit. All right, first off, let's go with the cordeline, cordeline. It's a little bit wonky. It'll straighten out though. This is potted in pure peat. Usually with the tropical, I'll just leave it in its nursery can and put the soil around it so I can just lift it out at the end of the season. But I think I may go ahead and actually pot that in there because I don't like it being in this moisture retentive mix. Right, so I've kind of got the big guys arranged in here. Like I said, I know this isn't going to look beautiful when it's done. This is one of those things that are, it's, it's going to take some time. but. I wanted to make sure that that banana, this is Enset Glockum, by the way, the snow banana, that one is somewhat centered. I'd like for it to be a little bit more forward so that 
since it will be perennial technically in this pot, it has a little bit more room for growth because they get pretty massive. Black coral elephant ear here in the front is going to provide a nice contrast with those reds, the pinks, and the greens. Sclepius in the back looks fine. I'm fine with that. I mostly want that there for the butterflies. Okay, and now I'm going and filling in with these begonias and dividing up the vinca that was in that hanging basket. Basket. I say basket weird. Basket, not basket. Getting those placed in. Really, they just, they pull right out. I'm trying to put the smaller pieces over towards the edges. And then see if this will fill in here. Eh, need some tweaking. But I'm going to get the rest of those begonias in there and finish this up. All done. Have to say, by far, prettiest planter I've ever made. Just kidding. But hey, it was cheap, it was clearance, and there's still plenty of time for this to recover and everything in here to bounce back and look good. I'm all right with it. So there are these wax begonias here in the front. End up only using two of the six packs, so to figure out what to do with the other four six packs. Got that vinca divided up in here, the Enset glaucum, the cordeline, cordellini, cordellini, whatever, and then the uh, uh, Asclepius. Who? Who are you? Carissa, Carissa. There it is, Carissa vica. That one, not the hardy kind, the tropical kind. Still pretty. Love the flowers on it, it helps bring in the monarchs. Which where I live, we'll be moving on through here fairly soon before their final journey down south. So I'm trying to spread these out. I have more perennial milkweed than the tropical, but I just, I like the color in the tropical one. <laughs> Look at, this is Trixanius, like totally, whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna water this in and get hooked up to a dripper in the driveway. Uh, I went ahead and watered this guy in and actually, Change of plans. No, I'm not redoing it. I should probably top off those begonias though. I'm gonna hold off on putting it in the driveway and hooking it to the drippers just for a few days. Since I tore the roots up on the these vinca so much and the begonias look so junky and just everything in here are things that really need some help. I really think it'd be best to give this part sun for a few days instead of just sticking it in the driveway with the asphalt and the wall and it's just it's very, very, very hot there. Even with the drippers. I'm gonna give this like a week and then I'll move it. I mean, I'm gonna see how it's doing. If I'm not seeing any type of stress response from these guys within 48 hours, maybe 72, then I'll, I'll go ahead and move it. But for now, this is good enough. And then after a couple days, I'm gonna go through and top these begonias off to let them go ahead and refill. These are the wax begonias and I'm not really a huge fan of them. I like that they're tough. I mean, you can plant them in masses in the sun and they're generally fine. I mean, unless you leave them in their six pack for a terribly long time in the heat, then not so much. Then they end up looking kind of junky. But overall, they're a tough begonia, but they just, they don't really grow and fill out very much. That's why I put so many in here. I actually wanted to put more in here, but it just wasn't really working with the different root masses and things like that. I just went ahead and left it. I absolutely love these vincas. Aren't those so pretty? They're a really pale baby pink, and then some of them are white. I don't know if there's different varieties in here, if they fade in. I'm looking at this flower, I think they probably fade in, or go from the white, they probably fade from the white to the pink. That would be my guess. Is it bothering anybody else that this heavy clump is to the side and not directly in the front? It's bothering me. <laughs> Considering everything else in here, I think we're just gonna need to get over that. The plants are like this. When you're working with the clearance plants, they do require more patience, a little bit more TLC, but overall it's kind of fun because I'm really going to get to see a lot of change out of this. For one, I'm looking forward to this guy straightening itself out, and then this insect glock I'm kind of growing up and being above everything and not immersed within it. And then that nice black foliage and shiny glossy foliage from the black coral alakaja, kalakaja. Kalakaja, Kalakaja black coral. Gonna be really pretty, especially, woohoo, these guys. I hope they bounce back quickly. This is, however, where it's time to wrap things up. As I mentioned, I got my wisdom teeth pushing through, making talking a little bit hard, and I feel like we got a lot done this week. Did we? Kinda? Yes, we did. By we, I, I'm referring to myself as we. Nothing weird about that. Hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It helps the video so much. And I really appreciate every single one of those. Thank you. Subscribe as well. It's down there. I upload multiple times a week. And I link all my social media down there in the description, down there in the, down in the roots of the video. It's a lot of fun. Follow me and I follow you back and we look at each other's pictures. Speaking of down below, don't forget to comment. I love talking to everybody and hearing what everybody's got going on. Are the nurseries clearancing everything out where you are too to get ready for fall? Happens too early in my opinion, but 
is what it is. I mean, if they started selling summer stuff in December, I'd be buying it, so I get it. Oh, and if you're new here, don't forget to hit the notification bell, because otherwise it doesn't tell you when new videos come out. Also, if you're new here, this is not representative of the planters I normally put together. This is when we're keeping things on the cheap. Garbage planter. Well, I really hope everybody's doing well. I'm having a beautiful day. Most importantly, everybody, as always, keep on growing. Bye, bye.